chicken breast is for like bitches who like want to be on a diet and like look skinny, but like because this is like so much fat. I, like, eat, a, I eat a lot of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe you're one of those girls. I don't know. <laughs> Chef Leah Cohen, you traveled for a year throughout Southeast Asia before coming back to New York to open Pig and Cow. You became obsessed with this dish. Yeah, so this dish is called Cow Soy. I like ate this every day for like a week straight to the point where I smelled like curry. I think the key to this dish is the curry paste. Mm -hmm. you, you can't buy curry paste like this. And then we make our own curry powder in house. So this is the base of the Cow Soy plus coconut milk and we add chicken stock. This is just boneless chicken thighs. Dark meat is obviously better than white meat. Because um, like if you're getting that into like a hot, hot pan, you can't control the white meat as easily. Yeah, right. and and I think there's more flavor in dark meat, and it just doesn't dry out as much. And then we do fermented mustard greens. We make these in house as well. So I we, give those a smell. Yeah, we ferment them. They're a little funky. They're uh, almost a little bit sweet, like a, like a butter pickle. Yeah, almost. we add red onions. And then we have two different types of noodles. They're actually the same noodles. These are gonna get boiled. Um, they're fresh egg noodles. And then these are fried. We use this garnish to give some texture to the dish. How do you start up with this one? All right, so this is the, this is the cow soy broth. Um, and so we're just gonna heat that up. This is probably our spiciest dish on the menu. Some people can't handle it. You said you can handle spice, so yeah, I'm sure we'll it'll be fine. Yep. <laughs> um, it's actually not, it's not that bad. And then we add the, the chicken thighs to that as well. Thai food to me is just like in your face. Like it's like spicy and like acidic from like all the lime juice that they use. It's fresh from all the herbs. Um, and it's delicious, but some people don't like it. Um, and to me, it's kind of like, it's like an inner struggle because everything is so spicy and I don't want to be like the white foreign person that can't handle it. So I like fight through the spice and I'm, I'll be like drenched, like soaking sweat, but like I'll feel accomplished at the end of the meal because I was able to like power through it. If that makes any sense. A meal should be a challenge. <laughs> is that what this is gonna be for me? You're gonna no, be a test. No, no, no. I think, you know, like we we have to keep our client base in mind, so we don't want it to be super hard for you. When it came to like wanting to cook, like travel throughout Southeast Asia, like yeah. what what made you wanna go? Because you were a French trained chef. I just got sick of cooking food that I wasn't like passionate about anymore. So I, I wanted to cook the food that I was, you know, craving. In culinary school, no one really does an in-depth course of Asian cuisine. So for me, like, I just, I figured the best way to learn the food and like really learn it the way I wanted to was to go to the actual country. Do you think people are more adventurous? Like it seemed like maybe, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they wouldn't want to have fish sauce and like, pickled things and fermented things, they were like a little more afraid of stuff like that? Oh yeah, I mean, I think that the word fermented still scares people because they, they think it's like rotten, you know yeah. what I mean? But I think people are becoming way more adventurous with the type of Asian food. It's not just Japanese, it's not just Chinese. Um, three years ago, people didn't know what the f Filipino food was, you know what I mean? So this is it, oh, this is the final, the final dish. This really? is my favorite thing ever. I hope you get obsessed with it like I did. I'm gonna splash all over myself. Anyway. Well, that's the thing. Like, I feel like this is super dangerous because of the turmeric powder. It has destroyed so many of my t-shirts. So I'm gonna need a bib. I mean, I need one anyway when I eat, but <laughs> especially now. There you go. It's not killing me with spice yet. It or is it gonna, is it gonna turn it'll, it on? Um, it'll heat up your mouth okay. towards the end, yeah. It's really good though. Yeah. I don't think me and my white meat bitches would <laughs> approve. About, you know, eight minutes in the pan, just let it hang out there, really render out, get that skin nice and crispy, and at the very end, we'll just flip it over, get a couple kiss with some butter and some garlic, and then uh, let it hang out for a little bit. Awesome. So we've rested this duck now for about 10 minutes. And now you can cut it. And so now you can cut it. At this okay. point, you're gonna just take a sharp knife, right? Yeah, you can see how the skin is really tight to it. There's exactly, not a lot of fat. You're exactly. right, the, fat's, the fat's essentially gone, right? Exactly. I mean, that skin is nice and crispy. So now we're just gonna go on the plate over here, right? We're gonna take a little puree that we've made from uh, smoking blanched cauliflower. Uh, that, that